Hey, good morning, Brownsboro. This is Tanya Gray, and I'm one of the counselors, uh, uh, the junior senior counselor at Brownsboro High School. And um, we're also going to be hearing from Ms. McKibben in just a little while, and she is the freshman sophomore counselor at Brownsboro High School. And we wanted to start talking to you and have you thinking about planning your schedule for the 2021-22 school year. Uh, we do want to give you some important information. We also know that students will be um, visiting with us next week in their classes and we will be discussing about planning the schedule, but many times when they get home, the parent does not know um, a lot of information that we gave the students. So we also wanted to make this informative video, hoping that you as parents at home uh, might get some of your questions answered and we encourage you to talk to your student when they come home with the information we have given them as they plan their 2021-22 school year and we're very excited about uh, the upcoming school year and what what it might bring. I'm a ninth and 10th grade counselor and um, we just want to uh, welcome you and um, talk to you about the 21-22 school year and the courses that you may have available for next year. And as we talk to students in classrooms, each student is going to re receive something like this. It's a course request sheet. And so we, we will actually kind of walk through the course request sheet, show you how to complete that, uh, go through questions that are typically asked about courses that are offered, and the order that courses are supposed to be taken. Um, in addition to that, everyone will also be receiving their transcript and it's going to look something like this. And we'll kind of walk through that process as well so that you can understand how to read your transcript. Um, before we start doing those things though, I'd like to go over to the computer in just a bit and show you how to access the educational planning guide because that's going to have all of your um, course offerings for the next school year. Um, it's going to also have the graduation um, plan that the state of Texas requires for you. It will go over endorsements and what that means. Um, it will also go over which career path you might be interested in taking. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and look at the computer and I can show you how to access the educational planning guide. Okay, we're going to show parents and students how to access our educational planning guide and you will go to the gobearsgo.net main website and then under schools select Brownsboro High School. Even if you are an 8th grader, you're still going to select Brownsboro High School. When you're on the Brownsboro High School main page, here in the top you might see educational planning guide and if you don't, if you have an arrow, just click the arrow then you can see it and then click on the 2122 educational planning guide. The guide will come up and then we want you to go to page 18, which I have already uh, scrolled down to page 18. So I want to start at this location. This is where uh, Brownsboro High School information will be located in the planning guide. The beginning of the guide was for junior high. Um, so when you get to page 18, it has some information about planning your high school program. Um, it tells uh, about our principal, assistant principals, and it, some general information about Ms. McKibben and myself, and uh, a little bit about how we welcome you to, to the high school and we look forward to seeing you. And then under graduation programs, there's a little bit of information about Bear Academy, and um, what that is, that's where you're taking college classes or you can begin taking college classes as early as your sophomore year in high school. And you can read about that information. We have some about early graduation. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on that because that's something as parents you could look into and if you have any questions, you could contact us. We do have our special programs information and we also, your, your student will continue to be served in special education or section 504 or bilingual ESL uh, gifted talented so we do have those programs and we have uh, definitely have resources available for those uh, programs if your student is in one of these programs advanced placement same thing uh, we do serve our advanced placement kids 
And we have some information about a profile of a successful AP and pre-AP student. We are an open door high school, and that means that if your student would like to take a pre-AP class, which is an advanced type of course, um, it's more rigorous, the student moves faster through the course, it's generally a little more difficult. Uh, we do encourage students, if they want to try something, they can take it, even if they're not taking a, an honors class or something previous. But we would like for you to read through here, and we do encourage you to know that this is um, an advanced course that your student would be taking. Um, our freshmen start out in pre-AP classes. It stands for pre-advanced placement. And then sophomores through senior level are uh, able to take AP courses, and that stands for advanced placement. And that is um, actually controlled by college board. Those courses are taught like a college course, and your student could receive possible college credit for a particular class that they take in high school. But all of that will be sophomore through um, their senior level in school. They begin as pre-AP only as a freshman. And they might only choose to take one pre-AP or they could take as many as we have available. So it should, we encourage you to have a conversation with your student. If they are a really strong science person, they might wanna take a, a science pre-AP class, but take everything else as a regular class. Um, or if they feel like they're ready for the challenge and they want to move faster in a course, they might take all pre-AP courses. The advantage to that is that you do go deeper and farther with the information and a little more rigorous, as well as receiving extra points that are counting in the student's um, GPA points or the GPA uh, that they are building in high school. And that is their grade point average that they will build throughout high school. We do want you to look at the four-year graduation plan flowchart, and this just shows that at the foundation level, we do require 22 credits, um, four credits of English, three credits of math, three of social studies, three of science, two foreign language, one fine arts, one PE, a semester of professional communications, or we call it speech, a semester of health, college transition, uh, we also have some other options they could take in the place of that that we'll talk about. And one credit of a tech app plus three credits of electives. So there's 22 credits at the foundation level, but it doesn't stop there. As you go up, you will see that every student needs to go ahead and take another math or another science course. And depending on their endorsement that they pick, uh, then they will have uh, some other electives that are in that area which causes them to end up with a total of 26 credits by the time they graduate. Okay, back to the chart. Um, on this four-year graduation plan flow chart, you will also see how we talk about these different endorsements. And we have a STEM endorsement or a business and industry, an arts and humanities, a public services, and a multidisciplinary studies. And Ms. McKibben will go into more details about what those endorsements mean in just a little bit. So by the time your student graduates high school, they will have 26 credits with an endorsement, which is almost like what they focused their electives on in high school or like a mini major, if you will think of it that way for college. Um, and distinguished level just means that they did take Algebra 2 while they were in high school. And if you are in the top 10% of your class, you most certainly will need to have Algebra 2 and graduate distinguished level to go on to college. And I would say um, almost all of our students do graduate with this distinguished level um, achievement anyway. So then we move on down to class rank and weight chart. If you're interested in knowing how our courses you know, what is a pre-AP, why should I take a pre-AP, or why should I take an AP class, or even a dual credit course. And you can see that um, as your student takes a course and makes uh, a certain grade, that grade will go on their transcript and their report card. But in the background, in their GPA, grade point average calculation, they will get extra points depending on the type of course. So if they take a pre-AP class, for example, Algebra 1 pre-AP, if they make an 85 in the course for the year, they actually get a 95 counted in on their grade point average calculation. Same thing with a dual credit class. They take a dual credit class, they make a 90, 
they get 10 extra points, making that a 100 going into their grade point average calculation. AP classes get 20 points, but your student will get 10 extra points in the fall for taking the class, and in the springtime, they get 10 extra points upon the passing score of their, if they take the AP exam and they pass it, they will get the 10 extra points at that time. And then we'll move on to endorsements that Ms. McKibben will be giving. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and we're gonna talk about the endorsements a little bit more in depth so you can kind of understand what an endorsement is. And the way I like to explain it, as Ms. Gray kind of alluded to earlier, is an endorsement is kind of like when you go to college, you have a, you have like a major course of study that you're going to do. It's what you major in. And so if you kind of think about, about an endorsement in, the way, in that way, it is basically courses that you are more interested in that are gonna take you down a specific pathway. And so um, then you have those foundation classes, obviously, that you would take in addition to the, some of these other courses that we're about to describe. Okay, so the first one is STEM, and that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And of course, those are kind of just what it says. Uh, those are courses that are related to, to those particular areas. And we offer advanced math classes and advanced science classes. We don't have the extra technology or the engineering classes for STEM, uh, but we do have some, uh, some advanced math and some advanced science courses. And so it kind of gives you a description um, right here. And Algebra 2 is one of the courses that you must take um, in that sequence. And then two additional maths beyond that. And so that's gonna give you a total of five math classes. And you also have to do the same thing with science. So each of those areas, you're gonna have to have, if you wanna do a STEM endorsement, you would have to have five math courses. Or if you wanted to do STEM science, you would have to have five science classes. And on those science classes, it would have to include uh, biology, chemistry, and physics. So you are required to take physics um, along with the chemistry in order to qualify for that advanced, uh, for the STEM endorsement with science. Um, we also have something called Arts and Humanities. And the way we uh, fulfill that endorsement here at Brownsboro is through the Fine Arts Department. And that could be through um, through any of the fine arts courses, like maybe you might wanna take art all four years, you might wanna take theater, or you could do a combination of those courses. Um, then we have business and industry, and as you can see, this particular um, endorsement is one that we have a lot more things that you could actually do. And so um, there are several things that fall under that particular endorsement agriculture and you can do several different pathways within that agriculture uh, pathway you could do the animal science plant science or you could do the agriculture uh, welding and engineering there's also architecture and construction which is going to be your carpentry type classes you could do the arts audio video and communications or um, and along with that um, is the digital communications design and multimedia arts that's gonna be like your graphic design those types of classes we also have a business focus that you could take some business courses um, and within as you can see within each of these endorsements it kind of breaks it down and then even within like agriculture there's different ways and different pathways you could even go once you have completed or uh, once you decide which way you wanna go. Um, then there's hospitality and tourism, and that's gonna be a culinary arts focus only. And then the manufacturing is going to be that advanced manufacturing and machinery or robotics. Public services is gonna be along the educational or health lines there. And so we've got some teaching and some early learning that can happen with the public services. And then with the health science, it's gonna be the, a healthcare focus. Multidisciplinary, that's kind of like if I go to college and I don't know what degree I'm, that I'm gonna be going for, I may just wanna get my basics out of the way and then I may wanna take some courses in a lot of different disciplines. 
So for example, I could go in and take some education classes. I may wanna take some agriculture classes, but I'm not really focused on any one particular area. And so that's where that multidisciplinary endorsement would fit in. And then as you go through the planning guide, um, it's kind of got it, I like the way it's color coded because that kind of makes it easy for you to follow. And there are some, there's some specific information like here with the STEM math and science is what we're referring to the five credits. And so um, on page 25, I like this because it breaks it down within each endorsement, the different programs of study. And so the state of Texas kind of wants our students to really have a more focused um, line of courses that they take. And if you are not really sure, like maybe you know you wanna do something within the agriculture classes and you're not really sure what your focus is gonna be, um, or maybe you do, maybe you think, okay, I really like animals and I wanna do something with animals. So for example, this is the business and industry endorsement, but the career cluster is that agriculture like we were talking about earlier. Um, and then if you do like an animal science focus, these are the courses that you would take and in that order. So you've got your level, let me move this up just a little bit. You've got your level one courses, you've got level two courses, and these level three and level four courses are those more advanced courses. Um, but you must complete these courses within that, cor that program of study in order to um, actually accomplish that. And then, you know, um, honestly, you could um, you could do more than just if you maybe you like animals and you like to do the welding as well. You could do you could do some of these animal classes and go through that program of study. But you may also have enough courses to complete this program of study with the welding. Um, you may or may not have more than one endorsement that you could qualify for. Um, but you know, you're really only required to have one endorsement, um, but many students by the time they graduate have taken enough courses in a program of study to complete more than one. Um, this is more business and industry and just kind of wanted to give you an example of these career clusters that are a little different because this is the arts audio video pathway. And so you've got digital communications here, but then you also have the design and multimedia arts and so there's different, see here, there's a variety. So you've got your radio classes here, you've got your graphic design here, and then the commercial photo. And those are gonna be kind of like our journalism type classes. Go on down here, continuing on through business and industry, here are your business courses. So this just kind of gives you an idea of what classes to plan for when we are working on your schedules in the future. So I'm gonna move on down through here and page 29 starts that public service endorsement. So there again, this is kind of two different pathways here, two different programs of study that you could do within that public service, within education here, within that career cluster, which is education. And these are the courses that you take in that order. And I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that because I feel like we can get kind of bogged down and it can be overwhelming if you're thinking about what do I take the next four years in high school? But the good thing is we break it down each year for you and we go over the same information every year so you're not stressing out about what you need to take. And if you have specific questions about things that you want to take or you're not sure, the very best way to get in touch with me is probably through my email and I'm gonna give you that information here in just a bit. So go ahead and go to page 30, and um, this is where all of your course descriptions are all the way through to the end of the book, but I kind of wanted to give you um, an example and show you how to read the guide. So anything that you're looking for, you've got all of your English courses in here, um, those are your core classes. Um, math is also a, considered a core class, and it tells you um, I wanted to move to something like math because you're going to have some classes that may, it may say the word prerequisites. And basically what that means is before you take this class, you must take this other class. So for example, look at algebra two, you've got prerequisites here of algebra one and geometry. That means you have to have had both of those before you can take algebra two. 
But then look at financial math. Your prerequisite there is algebra one. So, you know, but it tells you specifically what you must take in order to take these classes. There are some courses, if I can find one that has, it may have some, um, some suggested prerequisites that are not required. And those are gonna be on down. Miss Gray, you might have to help me remember. I'm trying to remember if the certain classes. Let me see if I can find an example of that. I don't know the. Did they keep that in there? You're gonna have, probably have to like take this part out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know what I'm saying yeah. because that gets so confusing. Yeah. yeah if and so. Suggested, I wouldn't worry. Okay. So, um, okay, so kind of going back through the planning guide and just wanted to show you how to read that. Also, so the name of the course is up here and it will tell you the number of, cre the number of credits that each is worth. Like this is government, for example, and it's worth a half of a credit, which is equivalent to one semester of school. And the GPA level, that is that chart that Miss Gray re was referring to earlier when she was talking about those pre-AP and those dual credit classes and uh, when she was also referring to your GPA point calculations. And so that is the different levels. All classes that are non-pre-AP or AP or dual credit, if they are not those things, they're all level one. Anything that's a level two or three is gonna be a more advanced course where you get those extra points. So it also tells you what grade levels that, um, you know, what grade level of students can take those particular courses. So these are only seniors. And so that's why that says grade level 12 there. Um, this U.S. history, it's actually changed a little bit. Um, I know it says grade level 11 here, but there was a change, a shift that was made in the way Brownsboro High School does their history. And so this probably needs to be corrected at some point, but we will let you know that 10th or 11th grade students can take U.S. history. And also, um, I wanted to go back to that government and economics is another one that 11th or 12th grade students can take because it depends on which courses and the order of the coursework that you do um, as to what order you're gonna do those in. And even though it's in the planning guide, if it's not on their course request sheet, that means they, right. they can't take it, but you know, they'll be able to see what's available to them on their sheet. Right. Okay. So um, those were kind of, I kind of went through some of the core classes to kind of give you an idea. And then if, when you go through, this is all the career and, edu and technology education. We call those Kate classes sometimes or CTE classes. So if you hear that referred to that way, that's what that means. And I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I wanted you to see how nice the planning guide is and how easy it is to read. It's color coded. So the easiest thing for you to do is like, if I know this course is a, it's in the, like that endorsement was the red endorsement, you know what classes would go along with that endorsement. So that kind of makes it easy for you to follow. Um, and then, you know, what we're gonna do next is we're, gonna, we're about to go through the course request sheets. We wanna show you how to complete that. And we also want to show you an, an, an actual transcript so that you can kind of follow along maybe with your own transcript. Let's say you, maybe you missed the time that we came into your classroom or you're a parent and you don't know how to read a transcript. Your child, no matter what they tell you, will have been given a transcript when we go into their classes. So they can bring that home to you and you can follow along on this video and we can show you specifically what each thing means. And then if you have any questions, please email me uh, mckibben t at gobearsgo.net and that's mckibben is spelled m-c-k-i-b-b-i-n-t at gobearsgo.net my email address is also online um, on my web page and it's also going to be on your students um, sheet that they bring home to complete their courses on their course selection sheet so um, you can also email Miss Gray if you're going to be an 11th or 12th grade student. Hers is going to be grayt at gobearsgo.net. And so her email address too will be on those grade course, uh, those course request sheets as well. 
So we're about to take just a second here and we're gonna switch gears to show you how to fill out that form and walk through a transcript with you. Okay, so this is gonna be the course sheet for incoming ninth graders. And the very, it's very important that everything on here is filled out completely. Make sure you put your first and your last name, not your nickname. Be sure you put your, uh, your name that is in the computer in Skyward, plus your last name. A cell phone where you can be reached this summer in case something's going on with your schedule and we can't get things to work out just right. Who do I talk to this summer to figure that out? Same goes with the summer email address. Don't give us your school email address. Give us something that we can reach you at this summer. So one of the first things it asks you is which endorsement will you be pursuing? Well, you may or may not know that yet. What I would like to say is if you're just not 100% sure what classes you might be interested in, multidisciplinary is always a good one. But remember, business and industry has a whole lot of different things that you could choose from. Refer back to your planning guide for that. Same with arts and humanities, that's gonna be your art, your fine arts classes, the public services, STEM science or STEM math. Please be sure to check one of those. Remember, if you're not sure, just do the multidisciplinary. All of the other information, like my personal information is here. It's how you can reach me. So the way we like to complete this is if I'm a student and I am currently in, maybe I'm in a pre-AP class for my English. I'm probably going to want to take my English 1 pre-AP next year, so I would just put a check mark by the one I want. But maybe I'm not a pre-AP kid. Maybe I would like to go ahead and just take a regular English, just like a, a lot of my other peers do. I can choose either one of those, though. I don't have to be in a pre-AP class to take it next year. So I'm just going to check one. If I am in eighth grade math, I'm going to have, I have to take either Algebra 1 or Algebra 1 Pre-AP. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. But if I am in Algebra 1 this year as an eighth grader, I have to go into Geometry or Geometry Pre-AP. So you're not gonna check both of these. This is just kind of an example. So if I am in Algebra 1, I have to take Geometry next. If I'm in eighth grade math, I can't take Geometry. I have to have Algebra 1. Next is going to be your science. It's going to be either regular or pre-AP biology. You're just going to put check marks on these particular courses, world history, regular or, reg or pre-AP, and then you're going to put a check mark there. Then PE and athletics, we always encourage students to get that PE credit out of the way. If you're not going to be a boy or a girl in athletics and you don't want to take dance or you don't want to do athletic training, go ahead and check PE. To be an athletic trainer, you do have to complete an application. It has to be approved. So you can check that if you want it, but we do have to have an approval. If you are going to be in girls athletics, you must play either volleyball or basketball or both. If you are not playing either of those two sports, they are all others are gonna be after school and you, do, you cannot be in athletics unless you are in one or both of those sports. Boys athletics is a little different. You have to either be in football or basketball. If you're playing any other sport, you're gonna be doing those more like an after school type thing. So you do not have to be in athletics to play like soccer or, or baseball or something like that. So you're gonna just do check marks on these two columns here. Then within these two columns, you're going to number in the order of preference that you wanna take certain classes. We like to encourage students to get their fine arts credit out of the way in addition to their PE credit, because that's an easy one to do. But maybe you're already in an art one class, but you still wanna take art. So then you make sure that you check that art two. You cannot get credit for art one two times. So if you took art one as an eighth grader, you're getting credit if you pass the course. Don't check art one again, you'll check art two if you're in band okay so let's just say i'm in band for sure i want to do that i'm in, let's say i'm in spanish one this year i have to have my spanish two so that's going to be my first two classes in that order 
Then I'm going to look here, and I'm just going to kind of randomly, because I'm not even really paying attention here, but you're going to pay attention because you want them to be in order of your preference because we want to make sure. Now, I'm putting um, these two the same number because these are the ones that can count towards that speech and health credit. So I made those two numbers the same because it's one is one semester and the other one is gonna be on the alternating semester. So I'm only to number six. So I've got two more classes that I still need to number. So I'm gonna put these in the order of my preference. So what happens this summer is when I'm looking at this sheet, I'm looking at the schedule in Skyward, something won't work. Let's say I got you in these two, but I couldn't get your number four and your number five to work. I'm gonna look at your number six and your number seven. So if you do not wanna be in that class, do not put a number by it. Because what happens is there are times that I've had to go up through number eight. So it just needs to make sure, make sure that these two columns here are numbered one through eight. And a student can pick multiple out of fine arts. So you're not limited to just having one thing picked under a different section. The sections are just to let you see where the courses fall. And then just be sure that you sign here and you have a parent sign here, or we're gonna return that form back to you to get that signature. I wanna show you just an example of a high school transcript. Uh, many students, they don't really realize that when they enter the ninth grade year, that they, every class that they take, uh, as they start getting grades, they're actually earning this and creating this academic achievement record called a transcript. And this will go with them when they try to get a job or when they want to go to the military or especially to, to go to college. So we want you to kind of see what this looks like. And your eighth grade student, if they are taking classes right now, such as art, Spanish, Algebra One, there are some Kate classes that are offered, the uh, principles of agriculture, and um, there's uh, principles of applied engineering, maybe something else, but they can actually be earning high school credit even in eighth grade that will go with them. So they might already have a transcript at the end of their eighth grade year because they do have those courses. Uh, just to see an example of a typical transcript though, all your personal information will be at the top, which we have, we're using an example of a student that's already graduated. You can see the end of course um, scores that are listed here. And WAVE means that they might have come from out of state or a private school, or it could also mean that they, uh, because of COVID-19, they did not get to test. So they weren't required to uh, pass that, that particular test. So you'll see your end of course test listed there on the transcript. You'll also see broken down by departments. Uh, the particular course, like in language arts, you see English one, semester one grade, semester two grade, the average for the year, and as long as it averages out to be a 70 or above, the student will get the full credit for that particular course. Um, so we are divided up by departments. A student will be able to track and see what their credits are, and this will show them their total state credits that they have received. Uh, cumulative as far as all their high school years and then they will have um, every time we run a GPA ranking at the end of a semester they'll have a new ranking in the class and they'll have a class size and they'll have a grade point average and so what we mean by that is your class rank will be how many students are in um, the class rank will be what your child's position is compared to other students in that same class as far as their GPA. So if they rank number 10 in class out of size 180, that means they had the 10th highest GPA out of 180 students in that class. So this becomes important when a student starts looking at co attending college, being in the top 10% of their class, um, scholarships. Quartile also is important because if a student is in Quartile one, that means they're in the top quarter of their class. Quartile two is the second quarter and so on. Your student will also have their endorsement listed on the transcript, uh, what they were pursuing and what, what they completed. Um, and then they'll have a seal on it by the time that they graduate. So this is just an example for you to look at and know that this is what your student will be trying to um, build while they're in high school.